Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the scroller visualization. Now, the scroller visualization, as you can tell here, looks very similar to like a stock ticker, where you can see what's scrolling, the values that you have scroll from right to left, and allow you to see increasing values that kind of go in a circle. Once it gets all the way to the end of all the values that you have, it starts over at the very beginning and continues to scroll over and over. So it is an animated scroller. It does change values. It shows changes what's displaying on the screen. And it is highly customizable. You can change things like the speed at which it scrolls. You can change the size of the text. You can change a lot with the different status indicators. So there's a couple different status indicators that are available to you here, one being the actual color of the text, and then the other being the arrow that you see on the screen here. So for example, coffee is using a down arrow showing you that it is down in value. And you can also see that here by the deviation value of negative 8.42%. Whereas copper is actually up, it's up 11%, and you can see that indicated here not only by the color of the text, but also by the arrow shown on the screen. And all these things are customizable, including the color of the actual background. The black text, uh, or sorry, the black background can be changed to anything you want, and we'll show you some examples of that here in a few moments. Now, there's a couple kinds of values that you must have for the scroller. One is what, it is, what is it that you're trying to measure? So here we're measuring coffee, copper, or whatever other elements here that we want to look at. But you also need to have some kind of an actual value. So you can see the actual value here for coffee being $130. Then you need some kind of a deviation value for the indicator process to actually work. If you want to see an indicator of the arrow or the change in the color of the text based on the data, then you need some kind of an, a deviation value, which in this case you're seeing is that percentage that it's either up or down. And that's a pretty common way of being able to display it is what percentage are we up or down from the previous value that we had. So is coffee up from yesterday or lower than yesterday? And that's what we're displaying here in the scroller. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can go download the scroller, how to then import it into the Power BI desktop, and an example of how to use it. All right, so our first stop is going to be in the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that should redirect you to the site that I'm looking at. It's just a little easier to remember. And you'll scroll down when you go to this website, and you're looking for the option here called Scroller. You can go ahead and select the scroller here and download the visual, which is what we're going to import here in a few moments. Or you can also download some samples of it so you can get a good idea of what it is like to use the tool before you jump right into it. So go ahead and download this with me. I've already downloaded it previously, so I'm not going to do it again here. Then I'll close this out and work my way back over to the Power BI desktop. So I'm going to launch the Power BI desktop here on our screen. And we'll start by talking a little bit about the data that we're going to use today. I have a, a, probably a pretty standard example for using the scroller. We're going to be looking at stock prices. But I could very easily see this being used for other things, like uh, maybe patient data. If you're looking at healthcare data and you wanted to be able to analyze what things like the blood pressure for a patient was or other elements of a patient that you wanted to be able to measure, you could have that kind of go by on a scroller. I'm just trying to think of some creative ways that you could use the scroller. It's not exclusive to looking at things like st stock market data it could easily be used in some other areas as well. All right, but it would definitely be some kind of high-level metrics that you'd want to look at here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go look at some stock market data. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section here and find our stock market data that we're going to use. We're going to go connect to Excel for this example, and I'm going to go find the data that we need inside of my data folder here. But if you don't have the course files for this, you can, of course, download the sample data that we're using in the post below. So I'm going to go ahead and select the stock prices file here and hit open. And once I have that selected, you'll see there is a available stocks spreadsheet inside of that workbook. And we'll go ahead and select that. And inside of this one, you can see I have uh, four columns. One has the symbol of the, the stock. Uh, the other one has the company name. We have what its last value was of the, of the stock and then what the percentage up or down it was. Now, this last column is going to be particularly helpful or useful whenever it comes to trying to show a deviation or an indicator of some kind inside the scroller. All right, so we'll go ahead and select load here and pull this into our data model. And you'll see those columns immediately appear inside the field section on the right hand side. Now our next step is to go ahead and bring in a scroller, our custom visual that we've now downloaded. We'll go over to the visualization pane here and hit the ellipses and tell it we want to import that custom visual. Now again, the custom visual that we're going to be using here is the scroller. So I'm going to go ahead and find that in my list right here and hit open. All right, now we have added the scroller and you can see it appears over here. You can go ahead and select the scroller and it'll add that visual to our design surface. And then we can start to plot some data out on it. Now what I'd like to do before we get too far is we are going to create a new column. And we're going to use a little bit of DAX, which is part of 
the data modeling portion of Power BI to create a new column. Because right now, if you take a look at this, let's create a table here with this data in it. If I look at my data that we have inside of our data model, you can see we have, and I'll make this a little larger so it's easier to read, but you can see the kind of data that we're looking at. We have the stock symbol, we have the stock name, but really what I'd like to do is add a third column in here that has those two columns combined together, where I have the stock name and the symbol, kind of maybe in parentheses after the stock name. So if we wanted to do that, we can create a simple little calculated column. And there's a couple ways you can do this. One way is you can come up to the modeling ribbon up at the top and select a new column. And that'll walk you through creating a new calculated column. You can also right click on the uh, table that we have over here on the right hand side and you can create a new column here as well. Either way it does the same thing. So I'll select new column. And inside of this column, we're going to call this, we're, this is just naming the column here. We're going to call this stock name and symbol. Okay. And then we're going to define this by using the name column. So we're going to bring the name column that you see right here in. Okay. And then we're going to concatenate with that a maybe a parentheses. Maybe we want to have the stock symbol surrounded by parentheses. So I'll go ahead and have a parentheses here. And I'm going to add a space there as well. And then we're going to concatenate using the ampersand here. And we're going to concatenate in the stock symbol. So we can type symbol. There we go. And that'll bring that value in as well. Now I'm going to also concatenate in a close parentheses. And the reason why we're having to put these double quotes around it, by the way, is because the parentheses is a hard-coded value here. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let's see if that works correctly. I'll hit enter on this. We have a new column over here called stock name and symbol. I'll select that, and you can see what the value is going to look like now. And this is really what I want to have inside of our stock ticker. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the table. I just wanted to show you what that would look like. And then I'm going to go back over here on the left-hand side and select our stock, uh, our scroller, excuse me. And I'm going to drop into that scroller the stock name and symbol into the category section here. So I'll drag the stock name into the category section of the scroller. And you'll see how it appears here in a few moments once we actually get some measures. Right now we're not seeing anything because we don't have any measures on here. All right, now uh, below that you'll see there's two options. You can have a current value and a deviation value. Current value would be what is that stock price at right now? Okay, what is the stock price at right now at this 30 second? And then the deviation value is how did that change from the previous time we looked at it? So is it up 5%? Is it down 0.2%? Whatever it may be, that's what your deviation value is going to be set at. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and bring in, we got our stock name and price. Let's now bring in the last value underneath the current value section here. Okay. It looks like it's going to start working here. By the way, whenever you hover above the scroller, you'll notice it stops for you. Okay. So you kind of notice that. I'm going to make this a lot larger for us. And let's also bring in something like the change. So I'm going to drop the change inside the deviation value. I will point out to you before I drop anything in the deviation value that you'll notice everything is showing up in white. And the reason why it's showing up in white is because we don't have any deviation value for it to be able to show us what color we might want it to be. So do we want that stock price to be red or green? Well, it really depends on some kind of deviant value. So I'm going to draw, uh, drop in here the change into the deviation value. Okay. And you'll notice, uh, at least initially, it doesn't really do a whole lot with that other than the fact it adds an indicator there. Now, you'll see an indicator added in here where it's showing that it's down 0.03. And if we go a little bit further, we can see that this one is actually up 0.34. So interesting uh, capabilities in here. Now, one thing I want to point out to you as well is you do have the ability to affect the sort order of the scroller. Now, what you're seeing right now is it's showing 21st Century Fox as the very first item that shows up. Then you're seeing this next one show up after that. And it's basing it off of the name of the company. But if you wanted to, and if you, maybe perhaps you actually want to change it so that it sorts by the stock symbol, so that the Fox A doesn't show up first, you can do that. You can change the sort order of these fields. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Now, again, like I said, as soon as you drop your cursor above the scroller, it pauses it for a minute until you pull your cursor away from it. So the thing I want to show you how to do here next is how to affect the sort order. So how do I affect it so that it isn't showing things like the letter B here? shouldn't be mixed in with the letter A stock symbols. So the way to change that is you would select the stock name calculation that we did. That's the stock name and symbol. That's a calculation. You can see it on the right hand side here. You're going to select that. And then you're going to go up to the modeling ribbon on the very top. From the modeling ribbon, you're then going to choose this sort by column right here. So you'll choose sort by column. And you're going to change the sort by property of this to instead of sorting by stock name and symbol, Instead, we're going to sort by just the symbol. So check this out. When I change the sort order to symbol, notice when it starts over, it doesn't start at 21st Century Fox. It actually starts at Apple, 
and then kind of works its way from there. So that kind of gives you an idea how you can affect the sort order of that. It all has to do with that modeling ribbon that we're looking at up top here and changing the sort by column that you have available. All right, great. Now, there's a lot of other settings that we can do and play around with here, so let's take a look at some of those. If you go over to the Format Paintbrush on the right-hand side, that's the middle icon you see over here in the Field Well area. If you select the Format Paintbrush, there's uh, really only one section you care about here that's special for the scroller. The title, the background, the lock aspect, general, general and border, those exist in just about every custom visual that you would do inside of Power BI. But the scroller one here is specific to this visual. So if you expand the scroller, you'll notice that there's a couple options for you to work with here. The first one is this one here called Auto Size. And if you, I expand this a little bit, you can see it. It's Auto Size Font. So what this does is when I turn it on, it actually resizes the font that we're looking at inside the scroller based on the size of the design surface I give it. So if I make this scroller, it's going to make the text, if I make the, the scroller smaller, the text size is going to be smaller. So that's something that you can play around with there a little bit if you would like to change it. I'm going to flip that back. just want to show you what that looks like because I'm going to turn it back because there's some other things we're going to do later. But that's the auto size font. Is It automatically adjusts the font size based on the size of the scroller. Now, the other thing that you can do here is you can play around with the status indicator, uh, both the color of it, which is the property you see here, and just the status indicator in general. Now, the status indicator in general is that little red or green arrow that you see pointing up or down. If you turn off the status indicator, you will no longer see that arrow. That's what I just did here. I flipped off the status indicator, and so now you can no longer see that arrow. It's just simply showing the text. Now, you can also play around with the status indicator color if you wanted to, and this has to do with the arrow again. So if I flip on the arrow one more time, and I flip off this option here below where it says status indicator color, that's going to make it so the arrow always shows up white. Okay, so you'll notice here the arrow is always white. No matter what the value is, it doesn't show red or green. So that's what these values mean here. Then you can also play around with the status color, the text color, the, the actual text that we see here. So for Adobe systems, for example, if we turned on the status, and, uh, sorry, the status text coloring, that'll actually change the color of the company name while it leaves the arrow as is. So you can see the arrow is still white. That's because we left the status indicator color off but all of the names of the stocks are showing up in different colors based on the indicator value. Okay, so that's what that next property is. So you can really fluctuate and play around with this. You can make it so that the indicator shows color, or you can make it so that the text shows color. You can play around with that quite a bit. Next, you have the font size. Now you'll notice the font size has in parentheses, it says, if not auto size font. So it's telling you if you don't have the auto size font turned on, remember the auto size font was whenever we flipped that on, it increased the font size. So if you don't use that option, what you can do instead here is you can actually adjust the font size by manually typing it in here. I could type in 30 as my font size, and you'll notice that it increases a little bit just based on me typing it in manually here. You can also increase the speed of the scroller. So if you don't like how slow it goes right now, you could increase that and say you want it to go something like 2.5. You can increase the scroller speed there. You can notice that it's going quite a bit faster now based on that change. A couple other things that we have down here, you can see that you can also change the text. So if you didn't want it, the, the text to be based on data and you just wanted to hard code some text in here, you could literally type some text in here. And based on what you type, it's going to throw that in the scroller. Now, I'm not necessarily sure why you would do that, but maybe it's kind of a good purpose for testing, just to test the speed of it. I'm not sure why you would do that. Usually you want to base this off of some form of data. All right, so I'm going to take that out of there. Now, the other things that you can do in here as well is you'll notice the text color. Right now, the text color is set to white, even though you'll notice that there is color showing up on our design surface here. That's because we have the status text coloring turned on. If we turn this guy off, that was a property we looked at earlier. If you turn that off and you'll see it go back to white, then you can start to play around with the text color below here. So I can say, well, really, I'd like this to be all red, or really, I'd like this to be try this blue color. You can play around with a little bit more once you turn on, uh, or I should say turn off, the status text coloring. Uh, you can also adjust the background color. So if you don't like the black background color that you see here, maybe you want it to be something like white, so it's almost invisible, you can do something like that here. So you can see what we've done here. We've added on a white one, so it's a little clearer. And then you can also change the update interval. This has to do with how frequently the data is updated in the scroller, because it does cache it a little bit, because it's constantly scrolling. You can tell it if you're looking at some kind of real-time data that you want to increase the intervals that it's updated. But right now, it is automatically updated as well. 
All right, so a couple things that you can do to play around with this. You'll notice we, we really touched on all those properties. I'm going to revert this back a little bit to something that's a little bit more useful. Let's send this back. I'm just control z to get it back to where it was. I think that one looks pretty good. Again, you may want to play around with a status indicator color, but I'm going to leave that as white for this example. Uh, outside of that, everything is pretty straightforward. You can adjust the title here if you want to center the title and maybe uh, change this to something like stock changes. Okay, so I'm just kind of changing the title of the visual so I can show this as stock changes. Increase the size a little bit so you can actually see it there. There you go. Maybe I want to make it something like a different color, like a uh, more of a black than as opposed to the gray. And you can really play around with it some if you'd like. Uh, background, there's not a ton of background here. If you change the background, it would really just kind of show and change the color of where the title section is. So not really much point in changing the background here, but you can do that. Uh, locked aspect ratio, that might be helpful if you want, want know that you might resize it. You can kind of lock the proportions of it a bit. And then if you go underneath general, this is just for the location of where it's at on the design surface. Finally, the last option here is the border section. This is whether or not you turn on a border, and that simply just puts a black line around it. Uh, that's all that really is going to do for you here. So fairly simple, but there are quite a few properties that you can use to customize the scroller. All of those were inside the scroller section that we looked at, and you can really play around with and adjust the colors, the size, the speed. All those things can be adjusted inside of the scroller here. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this module looking at the scroller custom visual, and we look forward to showing you our next one.